Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So this is a video that you have been asking for for a really long time and I've finally, I finally got it. I finally got it ready. Um, <laughs> those poetry recommendations. So many of you have been asking for poetry recommendations, whether that's like poetry for beginners, just really beautiful poetry that you can get into or literally just anywhere to start with poetry. So I have selected a whole bunch of volumes, poets, pieces that are either my favorite or I think you know you're gonna love the lighting was really nice in my kitchen today so we're in here but um i don't think there's absolutely anywhere that you can dive into poetry that would be a misstep but these ones i think are more maybe more accessible than others and certainly very beautiful and i think will be like a good introduction to poetry because it'll make you want to read more if that makes sense i think i'm gonna begin with one that i read a long time ago and that is the flowers of evil by baudelaire this is so gorgeous so sumptuous like you want to eat it for dinner flowers of yield just kind of feels like dinner and diatribes by hosier this one comes with the french on one side and the english on the other uh most of the time the french is more beautiful than the english it was also very shocking when it was published because um it has outspoken portrayals of lesbian love it's linking of sexuality and death it's unremitting irony and it's unflinching celebration of the seamy side of urban life the volume was seized by the police and Baudelaire and his publisher were tried for offense to public decency. What can you do? Um, it was a really good time. It was a really good time. So gorgeous. I love, love, love um, works that look at sensuality and death or dying or anything like that. A lot of the lines I underlined, I feel like I just want to give you like a little bit of a taste of some of this to see like if it's kind of your thing. So this one is from the poem called Benediction. I'll set on him my frail, determined hand when I am bored with this blasphemous farce. My fingernails, like harpy's talons, can claw out a bloody pathway to his heart. I'll dig the bright red heart out of his breast, a pitiful and trembling baby bird, to satisfy the dog I like the best. I'll toss it to him with a scornful word. How much of it? I just want to like have a bath in i think a lot of people you, you just want to have a bath in baudelaire if that makes sense probably gonna be like a bath of blood beauty you walk on corpses this is from him to beauty walk on corpses mocking them horror is charming as your other gems and murder is a trinket dancing there lovingly on your naked belly skin you are a candle where the mayfly dies in flames blessing this fire's deadly bloom the panting lover bending to his love looks like a dying man who strokes his tomb you kidding me? It is so gorgeous. So that is Flowers of Evil. Highly recommend that one. Let's do something a bit, uh, a bit different. I think we're just gonna pull Emily Dickinson. This is a really gorgeous edition. This was a gift from Tanya. Thank you so much. Um, she has a channel if you wanna check it out. It's Atlas in a Jar. Really love her channel, but this is some selected poems. I didn't get to Emily Dickinson until this last year at university, actually. I'd only ever read bits and pieces of her here and there, but having to write about her really made me get into her and so much of her work is so gorgeous and on top of that they're very very short if you just want to like sample dickinson and see if she's for you she writes a lot of actually about the same things as edgar Allan poe um they're very similar this one's really beautiful because it's about her encounter with an old book an old work of art a precious moldering pleasure tis to meet an antique book in just the dress his century wore a privilege, I think, his venerable hand to take, and warming in our own, a passage back or two to make to times when he was young. It's a lot about solitude, it's a lot about the inner workings of her mind, it's a lot about going into yourself, um, a lot about impressions, moments, flickers, death, eternity, madness. Really, 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 really recommend Dickinson. I think you can't go wrong. And like I said, if you don't like her, um, it's not like you have to read a, a 10, 10 page poem or something like that. They're so short. Um, and she does a lot of really, really cool stuff on the page with her writing. Next up, I'm going to recommend more recent work. This came out in, I think, 1989. Um, and that is Butterfly Valley by Christensen. This is a piece of Danish poetry. I read this last year. Loved it. Loved it so, 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 so much. Butterfly Valley is so gorgeous. It works a lot with memory, with different associations with memory. And it does this through butterflies and their colors and the images that they bring up specifically related to the colors of like their wings. Up they soar the planet's butterflies, pigments from the warm body of the earth, a swarm of basic elements aloft. Is it the dreamed summer hour of my childhood, shattered as by lightning lost in time? 
so Butterfly Valley chronicles a lot of different kinds of butterflies um, and then connects each butterfly to like an impression or a memory or a piece from your childhood or a memory from your past, whether it's traumatic, nostalgic, beautiful, joyous, anything. When, with their image language, butterflies can use dishonesty and so survive, then why should I be any less wise? If it will soothe my terror of the void to characterize butterflies as souls and summer visions of the vanished dead. This collection also has the work, I think it's called The Fountains. No, sorry, it's called Water Steps, but it's all about different fountains. And then it has the last one, which is Poem on Death. This one I found really impactful as well, especially the line, um, Last night I dreamed that I died and came running with my dog into the kingdom of death. One of my like new recent favorites that I've read on poetry. This one is a bit of an older favorite, one of the more, I guess, difficult ones on here because it's Anne Carson. And everything that Anne Carson does is a complexity that I would like to spend my whole life figuring out. I I want to I want Ann Carson to adopt me this is my formal um, adoption application like I'm putting in an application to be adopted by Ann Carson she is so brilliant I've read a few of her works by now I have so many works of hers on my shelf and she is just one of my favorite composers if I had to list favorite Canadian writers uh, she is up there she is up 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 probably number one almost I would say um, so this is autobiography of red this is a novel and a poem all in one. Um, this is also a retelling of the Greek myth of Heracles and one of his tasks or um, the red monster that he had to fight. So yes, a recreation of an ancient Greek myth and a wholly original coming of age story set in the present. Um, if you can see like every single page, I just, one of the things I really appreciate with poets is, is them describing in the world or their experiences in a way that is new in a way that makes you realize, okay, I can conceptualize something in this way, and Anne Carson really is the person that I think does that the most for me, like the way that she uses language, it, it makes me able to better um, digest things, look at things from different angles, and the way that she uses words, it just really shifts your whole understanding, your ability to communicate, especially within yourself, all the silent communication that goes on. I think it's outstanding. Funnily enough, this one does start with um, Emily Dickinson like describing something as the rotten ruby of the night or he knew the sound of the door closing had to be kept out of him he felt everything in the room hurl itself away from him towards the rims of the world or describing someone looking at someone else she was rummaging in his face with her eyes rummaging in his face with her eyes like what is that about like i think she just she really really grapples in so many of her works with language um what it can do, the limits of language, how do we get underneath. She's especially concerned with translation, of course. Um, she does a lot of work with ancient Greek texts. She's done, uh, for example, a whole new version of the Oresteia. She's done Autobiography of Red, but this is just so human, devastating. The writing is gorgeous. Um, I cannot, cannot recommend this enough. This is one of the most unique things I've ever read. I would especially like to reread this because now I'm very concerned with like, um, I guess ecology or sciences, environmental sciences in literature, that's one of the reasons why I loved um, ice fields and like glaciers and stuff like that in literature, but Autobiography of Red does deal with volcanoes. Um, I think specifically Krakatoa, the eruption of Krakatoa, but it delves deep into like all the language, symbolism, meaning, and of course geology and sciences of volcanoes and eruptions, and that was just like so cool so highly highly recommend anything anything by ann carson i've also read men in the off hours and sappho her fragments of sappho that she translated amazing so just just anything obviously i couldn't get through a whole video without having rilke pop up anywhere i feel like i always recommend book of hours but i don't think i've talked about this too recently so i thought i would just use this opportunity to talk about it again uh i think it's i think i'm due for a reread i think i read this at least once a year. Um, this is a really beautiful edition translated by Anita Barrows and Joanna Macy. I think it's the anniversary edition. Beautiful. This is also called Love Poems to God, but it's very, very different than I think a lot of the um, traditional Western religious thoughts, symptoms, assumptions about the title would probably bring up in real life. I didn't even take a sip. Book of Hours is also split into a few different parts. We have the book of a monastic life, the book of pilgrimage, and then the book of poverty and death. 
Let's talk about the third book of Poverty and Death. Um, here both death and poverty, viewed so negatively by modern society as evils to flee, are upheld as sources of value and revelation. Instead of canceling life, death is its fruit, and an expression of our most intimate and unique strivings for meaning. Rilke tried to look at the destitute with the same tender attention that he would give to a tree. I love poems to God, it's like a mystical oneness, just like this, this oneness, this being, life, existence. I mean, you can read it any way you want, obviously, that's the beauty of it. It's so dark, haunting, it's very like earthy, like this book feels like mold, but like mold that you wanna, you wanna look at grow in like a cave. It's not gonna suffocate you, it's like very slow, creeping, it, get drib it gets dribbles of like moonlight or starlight when it like drips down into the cave and then it has like a root system that's just spreading outward like that's what this book feels like to me <laughs> when i lean over the chasm of myself it seems my god is dark and like a web a hundred roots silently drinking this is the ferment i grow out of like this is the ferment i grow out of yes let me ferment i want to ferment so i am sometimes like a tree rustling over a gravesite and making real the dream of the one its living roots embrace. Are you kidding me? I think this is a great place to start with Rilke. I don't think you can go wrong. I think just just do it. <laughs> just read it. Just goddamn read it. Oh, so good. Okay, then we have a few others. This one, I, um, this one I didn't enjoy too much, but I can definitely see how other people would enjoy it. This was on a syllabus at uni, and this is Memorial, a version of Homer's Iliad by Alice Oswald. So what she has done, here's what she did. She's like, I want to retell the Iliad. I want to tell the story, the story of war, the ancient epic poem of war, but I want to strip away all of the plot, um, kind of all of the characters, and I want to build a graveyard. I want to build a graveyard to commemorate and memorialize, memorialize everyone who died in the Iliad. So she went through the Iliad and she wrote down every single person who died in Homer's epic and um, they are in here. So we have like kind of mini poems devoted to different people who died. The first to die was Protesilaus, a focused man who hurried to darkness with 40 black ships leaving the land behind. Men sailed with him from those flower-lit cliffs where the grass gives growth to everything. Antron, he died in mid-air, jumping to be first ashore. There was his house half-built, his wife rushed out clawing her face. Podarchus, his altogether less impressive brother. There's a lot of nature, a lot of the natural world represented in Memorial. It's so humanizing of the epic. It really breathes like such new life. It's a profound examination of death and grief, war, um, but it's also a record. It's, it's a record keeper of death um, and it does so in such a beautiful commemorative way. There's so much to get out of this. I think Alice Oswald is insanely uh, talented. Highly, highly, highly recommend. Plus then you kind of get um, a good companion to either read before or after the Iliad if you want to tackle the Iliad, so yes. One that I don't have here, but I wish to god I did. I don't think this technically falls, like on Goodreads, it wasn't categorized as poetry, but I, I totally categorize this as poetry, and that is The Beatrice Letters by Lemony Snicket. I bought this a few years ago because if you don't know, um, Lemony Snicket in a series of unfortunate events, like he is very much a character, the author, Lemony Snicket, um, lot of very cool interesting like lore and just stuff going on with Lemony Snicket the person but he dedicates every single book in that series to Beatrice and the dedication is always something horrific because we know that Beatrice is dead or something and that he loved her so much I remember one of them was like to Beatrice darling dearest dead I remember that hitting me at like six, seven years old. The dedications is what uh, made me buy this book. So Letters to Beatrice is Lemony Snicket writing letters to this woman named Beatrice who he's in love with and he has been in love with since middle school, elementary school. It is one of the most beautiful, upsetting pieces of poetry. Like they are letters. Um, most of them are very short, but there are a few that are so much longer. I had the longest one previously memorized. It is so gorgeous. I just want to read you some of it because it broke me. I will love you if I never see you again. And I will love you if I see you every Tuesday. I will love you as the iceberg loves the ship and the passengers love the lifeboat and the lifeboat loves the teeth of the sperm whale. 
and the sperm whale loves the flavor of naval uniforms. I will love you as we find ourselves farther and farther from one another, where once we were so close that we could slip the curved straw and the long slender spoon between our lips and fingers respectively. I will love you until the chances of us running into one another slip from slim to zero, and until your face is fogged by distant memory, and your memory faced by distant fog, and your fog memorized by a distant face, and your distance distanced by the memorized memory of a foggy fog. I will love you no matter where you go and who you see, no matter where you avoid and who you don't see, and no matter who sees you avoiding where you go. I will love you if you never marry at all, and never have children, and spend your years wishing you had married me after all. And I must say that on late cold nights, I prefer the scenario out of all the scenarios I have mentioned. That is how I will love you even as the world goes on its wicked way. I can't. I can't with that. Did you hear that? Lemony Snicket. Lemony Snicket, you have no business writing something like that. You are like a weird, quirky children's author. <laughs> what is that? Like that, it goes on. It goes on for so many more pages than that gets very bizarre, like I said, very quirky. Quirk factor, a thousand. But then it comes out with lines like that, that just punch you straight in the face. I will love you if I never see you again. I will love you as we grow farther and farther away. It's just so, oh my God, one of my favorite like love poems, I think. That's, I think that's letter number nine, if I'm not mistaken. If you just wanna read that one, that honestly makes the whole thing worth it. So, okay, let's recover with some Edna St. Vincent Millay. Early poems. This is all I've read from this, person love her love i mean i don't think she was the greatest person actually i read something about her recently but love her work um beautiful i think this is a really really great place to start if um you haven't gotten into poetry before i think she's so fun kind of ticklish playful um but also writing about topics that are so just like cute there's a lot of like cottage core things i would tag in here um but a lot of this as well is very serious, very down to earth. Finely crafted lyrics and sonnets, she gave voice to her generation's claim to personal freedom and earned a reputation as a sexually liberated free thinker. Yeah, but she like goes all over the place with her topics. Like there's no one thing that this collection um, writes about or anything like that. This one, this one, this short little one. Oh my God. It's called Daphne. Why do you follow me? Any moment I can be nothing but a laurel tree. Beautiful, like this one. This one is called The Singing Woman from the Woods Edge. You know that's gonna be good. Or this one, we were very tired, we were very merry. We had gone back and forth all night on the ferry. Like it's the kind of like lyrics that you just remember for the rest of your night and you're like in bed and you're like, you know what, we were very tired, we were very merry. We had gone back and forth all night on the ferry. This one's called Witch Wife. I drew a heart around it, so obviously I like this. Um, she is neither pink nor pale, and she never will be all mine. She learned her hands in a fairy tale, and her mouth on a valentine. She has more hair than she needs, and the sun tis a woe to me, and her voice is a string of colored beads or steps leading into the sea. She loves me all that she can, and her ways to my ways resign, but she was not made for any man, and she never will be all mine. Highly recommend, highly recommend. This is like re-sprouting re my love right now for this lady. Okay, also this one, sorry, one more line I just found. Not only underground are the brains of men eaten by maggots. That's true. I've seen my fair share of maggoty brain men. This one also has some of her most iconic poems like Prayer to Persephone. This one's also a very short, nice introduction. And like I said, this is some of her earlier work. So it's called Early Poems. But those are my poetry recommendations for you. I think this video just became me reading snippets of poetry to you. But I hope that's okay because I think that's really where you get the sense that okay I am gonna like this because poetry is such an auditory thing something you just want to Scream out a little bit from the buildings I think from from the rooftops of the world and I think it's a really good place to Cement your opinions on things if you like the way that something sounds anyway, so that's my little list uh, If you want to get into poetry if you want to find some good places to start or just some ones Hopefully you haven't heard of I I'm gonna go actually drink the rest of this coffee now. I actually have a Zumba class in uh, very soon, so I gotta go Zumba it up now. That's where I'm gonna leave you. I hope you have a very nice day. If you have any poetry recommendations for anyone, leave them in the comments because I love when the comment section becomes a little cesspool of poetry, books, recommendations, everything. So thank you so much for always doing that. And um, until my next video, ciao.